Hello, hello. We're going to hack a web application and compromise the entire server using different techniques like local file inclusion, SQL injection, bypass filters, local privilege escalation. So let's get started. Welcome to the Hackerish channel. For those of you who don't know me, I just love hacking targets and learn along the way and share with you tips and techniques to help you in your ethical hacking journey. The target is hosted online on ctf03.rootme.org. So we have this host name, but what can we do with it? Well, the first thing is to perform enumeration. Enumeration of what? Well, of the different services that are exposed by this server. Each server has its own attack surface and to map that attack surface, we can use nmap. To look for open ports using a verbose mode and doing some service enumeration on that host name. I'm going to perform a quick port scan using just the top 100 ports. And I'm going to run this command. It has discovered 22 and 80. And with service enumeration, we learned that it's exposing a OpenSSH service running on Debian, so that's a Linux box, and a web application running on Apache version 2.2.22. By the way, if you want to follow my footsteps and become also a penetration tester, I have a course that allow you to become just that. Just go to academy.thehackerish.com and there you will find from zero to securing your first penetration testing job. I invite you to get a glimpse of the first module. First of all, you need to acquire the technical skills. Uh, this is where intermediate and beginners will find themselves. And from there, you will build your confidence and stand out from the crowd to increase your chances at getting the job interview and distinguish yourself from other candidates. And then you'll learn how to look for a job specifically for penetration testing offers and then succeed in your interviews and get hired finally. The goal of this course is to allow you to get, sign and become a penetration tester. All right. We're going to start first off with the port 80 and we're presented with this lame design of a web application. Now, don't let this fool you. I was fooled at the beginning thinking that this would be a boring hacking challenge, but it's not the case. Stick with me and you'll understand why. All right, so it says right away, show me your SQLi skills. SQLi means SQL injection. And I'm sure if you have heard of any vulnerabilities at all, the first thing people talk about is SQL injection. And we're going to just experiment with that right away. But before that, we will still do some enumeration to address the attack surface. We don't know anything about this application. So let's do some enumeration. We have a web page with an image, a title. Um, we have another section here which just says pirates um, there are no links that we can use well maybe I can use that feature and it's uh, just returning try again okay but it doesn't do anything special here so I don't see any links. Let me see in the source code or the HTML code um, we have a URL to the directory images and what else? We have some JavaScript code, which just switches uh, elements on and off based on their ID. Are we using this anywhere? No, the function is not being used. And so this is the title. I mean, the text show me your SQLi skills that we've seen just here. And we have the pirates, uh, section but nothing else okay time to do some brute force uh, let's use nmap for now and see if we can use the script http enum to perform brute force on the port 80 this time and target our host name let's see if we come up with any interesting entries oops i get nothing Let's retry with just space. Nope. Yeah, let's do a verbose mode to see what we have. Nothing. Ooh. okay. Well, we hackers always find other ways. So if nmap doesn't work, then we can use wfuzz. So I'm going to use the rafts 
All right, let's start with just the quick hits, which is a file or a word list under the Cyclists project. It's hosted on GitHub and I'm going to target my host name, ctf.303, and I'm going to just get rid of forbidden and not found response codes and give it a spin. All right, it seems that it's working. Oh, we have a file add.php. Okay. So that means that this application is potentially built in PHP. Yep, we have panel.php. We have phpmy, which might point to phpmy admin. That's interesting. And we have test and test. Okay. Let's play with those files one step at a time. So as you can see, we're slowly but surely building our attack surface. Oh, we have a form here. Okay, we find a file, upload, and just hit upload. I see nothing. Okay, do these files get uploaded to the directory images? So as you can see, I'm just trying to learn how the application works from a black box approach, meaning without having any prior data, just learning from the behavior of the application. Let's go to panel.php and see what we get. Yeah, we're redirected to slash index.php, which means that this uh, is protected by some sort of authentication. What about this directory? Oh, yeah, it's pointing to phpMyAdmin. Um, let's use the root username without any password. These are the defaults for a MySQL server, but it says here cannot log into the MySQL server. So we might need to uh, brute force this, but any brute force attempts, I let them at the end. They are verbose and I'm generally not very successful with them. Let's see the task.php. Oh, file parameter is empty. Please provide a file path in file parameter. Okay, so let's provide that. Um, let's say index dot php. We know this file exists because if we go straight to index.php, we land on a home page. Um, so this doesn't work. Okay, let's uh, try to send a post request instead of forget. I'm going to use curl for that. And the way to, to use it is just dash dash data. And you provide your data here. For, for example, we want file and uh, let's say index.php. Okay, and we need the host name dot root me. And we want to test the test.php file. So in this case, we're going to send a post data. Actually, let me just uh, use the verbose mode just to show you all the requests, headers. Oh, we get something here. What the hell? I think we've got the content, the source code, the PHP server side source code of the file. Oh, so that means that this is vulnerable to local file inclusion. So as you can see here, the post request is right here. We're using the user agent curl. And then in response, we have the attachment file name index.php with the content. Oh, perfect. So if we try like etc pass wd, oh, wow. Okay, right away we find a local file inclusion vulnerability. So what can we do with this? Well, first of all, let me go back to my attack surface and try to find how we can access the panel.php. Remember, it redirected us to index.php. So maybe we need the username and password right here. So let's try with single quote in both username and password. It says here, try again. Okay, let's see if we play a bit with the request. First of all, we need to grab the names of the fields. So we have login and we have input password. Okay, so let's try to send something on using curl. This time it would be in index.php and we want the data to be the name of the parameter login, let's say admin and password will be, let's say admin. I think I need to escape this. Yep, so we get something back 
and the response says here script alert try again this is what we get from the page meaning that we our injection was unsuccessful so this is exactly what we get when we send uh, the input like this this is the pop-up it's merely just a alert okay now that we know that uh, our input works let's uh, try with a um, SQL injection payload let's see one or one equals one with a comment at the end let's uh, hit enter and we get the same here script alert try again all right let's play a bit with this using burp to have a little bit of flexibility so if i send the same request once more i get the post request right here I'm going to send it to the repeater and start playing with it so if i send something like this payload right here i'm going to just encode it in url and paste it the same thing here send remember we need to verify if we get an alert back saying try again and indeed we get it right here so maybe the sql query is using double quotes instead of single quotes so let's try with that and it's saying the same thing try again so we can definitely try as many payloads as we want just a quick google search on sql injection payloads will give you an idea, but uh, I'm going to go another way in the next episode. So let me know in the comments, what would you do in order to exploit this SQL injection, if it is vulnerable to SQL injection, of course, and I'll see you in the next episode. As always, stay curious, keep learning, and go find some bugs.